All right, begin broadcast. Humble Among Broadcast System Special Edition interview. Today we got Nathan Tape. What's up, oh, y'all? Wait, well, I got my <laughs> I got my other screen audio open. Okay. Um, so what's up, Nathan? Uh, uh the, the start off question I like to ask most folks is what's your name and what's your gimmick? Uh my name is Nathan Tape. Um uh, it's also called referred to as Damn Nathan sometimes. Um or VHS tape is what Jimmy Soda called me at the gathering. Um, as far as my gimmick, it's a good question. Uh, I'm a you know filmmaker, uh, music lover, uh, love cinema, and um, yeah, I, I love to make movies and tell stories. Um, I want to do a couple of questions to sort of uh, break the ice uh, a little bit. Sure. What's the first movie you ever remember seeing in the theater? Like, do you remember your first movie you saw in the theater as a kid? Great question. The one I can really like remember was Return of the Jedi. I Hell remember yeah. being, I was really young. I was probably like three or four and I remember Jedi and I remember just being like afterwards, just being obsessed with, uh, you know, Star Wars and, uh, and even, of course I was a little kid. So, um, you know, um, the, you know, of course, Wookiees and, 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 uh, you know, um, what are the other ones? What are the little fuzzy ones? Why am I blanking? Uh, Ewoks. Them? Ewoks. Yeah. I loved Ewoks. Of course, as I grew older, I realized, well, Ewoks maybe weren't as tight as they, I thought they were when I was four, <laughs> but, uh, like the cannibals. <laughs> or, uh, they they are the humans. <laughs> yeah. They definitely ate humans. Um, I guess that's pretty good, but yeah, that Jedi was one that I definitely remember. Uh, and another one that I remember, I don't think I saw it in the theater, but that had a really big impact on me was raising Arizona as a kid. Hell yeah. That's one of my favorites as a kid, dude. I love that movie. Um, I'll, I'll go right into this one next. There's, I'm going to go back a second though. Who are some of your favorite directors? Because I feel like that's a good, uh, obviously, Cohen Brothers, I would assume, from, from that absolutely. answer. I'm, uh, I'm wearing it on my shirt. Right oh, now. fuck yeah. That's one of my faves, too, dude. Yeah, I absolutely, absolutely love Stanley Kubrick. Cl Clockwork is like, Clockwork and Shining are two of my favorite all-time all -time movies. This is, a, this is an adults available podcast, right? This is not Oh, yes, 100%. Great. So check this out. I'm going to show you. You can see behind me, here's a Clockwork Orange poster that I have. Oh, hell yeah. There's another one, and then there's a... 2001 and full metal and then oh, i have those this, are awesome dude i have this crazy one that i got from an african artist and it's whoa uh, a giant <laughs> whoa the, the 2001 the giant 2001 and then, and then there's also a, a, a dr strange love from like 16 oh man oh yeah so yeah you you you're a big fucking cubic fan big cubic um, fan um, i, I think, think that i think that ahead. does translate to your film your film work as well Oh, thank um, you. You're very inventive with your shots. Um, there's you. a shot in the movie. This I don't think this spoils anything. There's a shot in the movie that's maybe my favorite shot where they're leaving somewhere and they're getting back into the van and they, mm -hmm. they shut the door and the, the camera's mounted on the door and it shuts with a, you, you use the, the footage of the actual shut. And I thought that was so dope because awesome. obviously the camera was still like just mounted on the van from the shot you were about to do. And so you just did use the footage anyway. That shit was so fresh though, dude. Thank you, I man. Thank that. you. I, I really, well, it was very intentional. We wanted, I wanted it to close in the oh, show. Okay. Uh, and there's actually two movies that I kind of stole that from. Uh, there's a, a killing them softly, the Brad Pitt, uh, the movie um, uh, they do it in that movie. But actually before that is a movie called two lane blacktop, a Monty Hellman movie from like the sixties and seventies. It's a really awesome car movie. And I'd seen them do it in those times. And I just thought it was super cool. So no, thank you very much. I, I uh, I love that. So looking into your IMDb, you did a lot of um, work on. Uh, uh, oh, actually, I need to go back in time. I wanted to hit this other question. Sure. Um, what's the movie you remember renting the most from the video store as a kid? Ooh. Is there one is there one that pops up is like, yeah, that's the one I kept going back to. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I mean, mine was Jaws. I know mine is but mine mm. was Jaws for whatever reason. I kept going back to Jaws. I mean, it may have been, you know, Raising Arizona mentioning that. I mean, that's one that I definitely watched a lot. Um, you know, gosh, it's hard to say what what I was. I mean, I remember when Reservoir Dogs came out, I remember watching, you know, renting it a ton of times and, and bringing it home. I was a little bit older at that point, you know, but um, but yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of movies. Yeah, I probably the one I watched the most as a young kid, though, I would say maybe Princess Bride is probably among those. That's a great movie. I love that, too. Kind of um, my like, that's kind of my like, you know, favorite family friendly movie, if you will, you know. 
That's that's a great movie. Shouts out to Andre the Giant in that, in oh, that yeah. and I love that movie. Um, so yeah, looking at your IMDb though, you did a lot of work as like on the on electrical departments and as like gaffer, which is basically like electrical stuff as well, from what I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of those projects jumped right out out at me, and I want to ask you a little bit about this. You worked sure. on Jay and Silent Bob reboot, mm-hmm. and um, I have to ask you, uh, what was it like to work with Kevin Smith? And did he encourage you to make your own movie and or start a po- podcast? <laughs> uh, Kevin's great. He's a really kind person. He's very uh, he loves his fans. Um, he knows, you know, he's super cool. I mean, I got him to autograph my copy of Chasing Amy. Um, and he, you know, signed it and was like, thanks for helping me make my movie. And, you know, he's just a really personable guy. Very like he always applauded after every take for everyone that was in it, which is very cool. That's awesome. He'd just like make this big thing about applauding for it. Um, it just, a, a, you know, definitely a dream type of job to work with someone like Kevin. Um, uh, it was very cool. Again, just such a chill guy. Um, at the time he was smoking a lot of weed still and was smoking it on set and stuff. It was kind of funny because it would be like, we have like a scene with like Kevin Smith when he's Kevin Smith, not Bob. And he's like smoking a real joint and stuff. And that was pretty, pretty fun. And uh, you know, all the guest stars were great, but yeah, Kevin was really good. As far as I I can't remember if I, I, I can't remember if I talked to him about wanting to make a film, but he was very, he's very encouraging about everything you that's know he's why one of those, I asked. That's yeah why he's I one asked. of those guys that if you want to be around that, like wants to stoke you to like just do it like just start it and i'm a big uh i'm a big fan of kevin he's a huge influence on me uh, sure i mean well uh, clerks clerks is huge for me and yeah yeah uh, i mean even and mall rats too and you know we have a little uh we have a little cameo from uh, a mall rats guy and i was gonna ask you about that that was one of the characters i was like i don't i don't think this is a big enough spoiler the dude with the chocolate covered pretzels, I immediately go, that's mall rats. That's a mall. <laughs> and then I saw Jay and silent, Bob, silent Bob reboot. I'm like, okay, so that's definitely like a little tip of the hat, uh, to Kev. That's gotta be a little tip of the hat. Yeah, for sure. That's oh, and I love Kevin. You there. know, I, I love Kevin. I mean, I think you can see in a lot of our writing, you know, my, my writing partner and I love, um, you know, Kevin's dialogue particularly was re- always really great, really funny, a different take on on how to write dialogue. And um, yeah, and I, I know uh, it's Jeremy, you know, Jeremy London is a, is a guy in there. I know him. He lives in Mississippi and he's worked on uh, I've worked on a couple of uh, low budget movies that he is has been in and starred. And so I always wanted to get Jeremy in there. And it was kind of funny because in initially he was supposed to play the prison guard. That's like the like not not Faith, the, the juggalo prison guard, but the other one uh, who like gives him his stuff back. Yeah. So we had some scheduling things happen, and I was like, "Oh, you know, it'd be way better. Let's just call out Jane Silent Bob. I mean, Mall Rats. Let's just call out Mall Rats right away." Yeah, it's a dope. Very, that's a very dope, subtle little thing that like people go, "Wait a second, what?" Is yeah. that? I like, I like that one a lot. Um, so how did you get into uh, filmmaking or wanting to make your own? films i should ask yeah great question so yeah just to kind of give you a little capsule about myself you know i went to film school and at loyola marymount a while ago and when i you know i went to you know make films and be more of i was like uh i was like the cinematography ta and so i was really into like photography and the cinematography but you know it's not it's not easy to be like a young kid and and just start making movies and uh basically i'm from new orleans uh, I was in LA for film school, but I came back home to New Orleans and there was a, the film industry was kind of booming down here. So uh, I got into the electric department, a friend of mine just like had a, he was like, oh, you're back from film school, come work. So I went and worked and uh, did well and uh, and moved quickly and, and kind of ascended quickly. And that's how I became a gaffer and a, a, a chief lighting technician or whatever. Meanwhile, I was always kind of shooting, um, I, would, I would shoot like low budget features and music videos and things like that as a DP. Uh, and then, um, you know, that was kind of like, but that was still my passion, but you know, the, the bills were paid by being a gaffer. Um, and I, I'd always wanted to make my own film, but it would seem kind of like, a you know, maybe a far reaching goal or something like that. Um, my buddy, Tim and I had wrote the script uh, for off ramp. Uh, we started writing it way back in 2015 and we wrote it, but then I kept like life kind of kept getting in the way, you know, I kept getting jobs and it was like really hard to turn down these jobs as a gaffer. Uh, because of the money and the different people who worked for me. Uh, but then, you know, pandemic hit and, you know, we all had a lot of time to kind of sit around and kind of like focus on ourselves and, you know, see what we were really, yeah, I don't know, just focus and think a lot. Right. And so yeah. I, I sat there and thought about it and I was like, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, at the time I was like, you know, 
41 or two or 40 something. And I was like, I'm this old. I'm not going to ever get any younger. You know, if I don't do this now, when, um, you know, you mentioned you watch my short Mariah. I had done that like in, in 2019. And that was that same kind of creative desire. It's like, I just need to do a short. I just need to do something. And Mariah really showed me, hey, you know what? This is possible. You can do this. And um, another buddy of mine who I am his DP often, his name's Miles Doliak. He plays Randy Cox, the cop in the movie. Uh, he's great. Great character, by the way. Oh, One of my you. favorite characters. Thank you. And he does a great job. Miles is awesome. But Miles had been making some of his own features uh, in uh, Mississippi. He made like five or six. And he asked me to, to shoot a feature with him. And when we made that feature together, it just kind of, it helped me see how, yes, it's very hard. Yes, there's a lot of work, but it is possible to do a feature. So I was like, okay, let's re reorient. So I kind of, I went back to being a gaffer for like one last season of a TV show, knowing it was going to be my last one. And then essentially retired from that portion of, of work and decided to focus full time on, uh, you know, directing, making my film. And, uh, you know, I'd still DP, I still am, at, you know, act as a cinematographer at times, uh, because I think like that's still creative and it's still kind of like kind of in line. Um, so really, it was just one of those things of like, hey, take a moment. It was I had a burning desire in inside. And, um, you know, I just went for it. You know, that's awesome. You mentioned that off ramp was uh, in there. You mentioned that off ramp was uh, first written in 2015. And that jumped out at me immediately because while watching the movie, there's references to several deep I, I guess you could say deep juggalo lore like if you're in the juggalo world you would know some of these references that you just you sprinkle throughout the movie um and i was watching it i'm like okay so timeline wise i was saying this to emily my girlfriend timeline wise this movie like theoretically takes place around 2012 2017 Somewhere around there is when this movie takes place. So it's interesting you said it was uh, first written in 2015. Was it always a Juggalo road trip movie? It was always a Juggalo road trip movie. Um, I'll tell you a little bit uh, about kind of my journey with Juggalos too. and kind of Please like, do. That's actually a question I want to get into. Yeah, it'll, your relationship it'll kind of, with the Juggalodium. Sure. And it'll sort of touch base on that a little bit. Um, you know, when we first, I had this idea. I, I saw, you know, obviously, okay, so... When I was a kid, I remember going to a CD store and I bought like, you know, Chicken Hunting, the maxi cassette single, uh, you know, and I was like, I was like, oh, what is this? This is funny and whatever. And uh, it was kind of like, you know, I, I thought it was funny, whatever, but I wasn't necessarily, I didn't really follow ICP too heavily. Um, and then as, you know, around that time, as time went on, you know, kind of early 2000s, uh, early 2010s, you know, there was a lot of the the vice kind of attention on Juggalos and the gathering. Um, and, you know, a lot of it was kind of like sort of uh, mocking and laughing at sort of things. Yeah. And then, and I, but I was aware of it. But then a friend of mine showed me American Juggalo, uh, the doc. Fantastic documentary. Really, really liked it. And to me, that was what, what I... I found in that documentary was the thing that I was not aware of as an outsider was the Juggalo family and the Juggalo family love and the the idea that idea of like you know if you're a Juggalo your family and uh, you know this is this is our our chosen family and that and I was really touched by that and I thought you know what this is really cool that these people who may be misunderstood or looked at this way or may wear face pain or listen to horrorcore rap are acting in a way, uh, you know, not all, but most in the idea being that they're acting much more Christian than Christian sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I found that to be so touching and I thought it was really interesting. And I thought, Hey, this is a subject of a really cool movie because you know, we all kind of bring our prejudices and our biases to things. Even people who are cool, even people who are open minded still have their uh, you can't you can't help a prejudgment in your mind. It just happens. Sometimes you teach yourself to like shut it down. So when we started writing the script in 2015, you know, admittedly, it was much more of a straight up comedy. And it was much more. I will even say that, like, initially, our point of view was a little bit more of that vice sort of point of view of like, mm. OK, Kind of almost laughing at and i realized that was the wrong way to be i realized 
you know, after time that it was like, you know what is m much cooler is to talk about who these people are. And truth be told, too, I started to get to know Juggalos because yeah. as I started doing that, I started doing some research. Um, one of the things is uh, I watched, um, you know, the movie Family and uh, because I was just kind of doing research and I was like, oh, here's this other movie about Juggalos. And I kind of thought, oh, no, they made, you know, hope we didn't make the same movie, which we definitely didn't. It's no, very, definitely very, completely very, different movies. But one thing about family is that it it linked me to in the credits. There was a person that I had worked with who is like uh, the unit production manager. Uh, his name is Kenneth Yu, and he somebody I worked with in New Orleans. So I reached out to Kenneth and I said, "Hey, can you give me your Juggalo connects? Because I make trying to make a Juggalo movie." And he hooked me up. He gave me uh, Bill uh, Dale's email from Psychopathic, and he gave me Scotty D's info, Scott Donahue from um, uh, Bagel Lovers. And so I reached out to Scott and Scott was really helpful. He, you know, read the script. He gave me some notes on the script. Uh, we talked a couple of times and he kind of, you know, I mean, uh, I think one thing that happens is, uh, you know, a lot of jugglers are a little bit cautious, especially when they first kind of talk to me because they're, you know, and I, understandably so they've been maligned and people have made fun of them and stuff like that. And I ensured Scotty, I was like, look, what I want to do is tell a story about the real juggalos and 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 about the heart and soul of juggalos not necessarily just these other things and so as i got to know scotty um uh, you know and and he started giving me some insight but really the big shift for me was we made the decision to make the film and i said okay if i'm going to make this film i need to go to the gathering for multiple reasons yeah one i need to see what this is i can't i don't feel like i, I feel like I, i'm not going to ever really know what this is if i don't go and two uh, as when you see the film you'll see that there's footage uh, from the gathering um because it kind of plays as like a sort of a b-roll I, I like to call it like a nature documentary it sort of like has a kind of like nature documentary feel um to the stuff at the at the gathering and you know right away from the gathering i immediately like you know was was just touched by the people that I met. I just started talking to juggalos and just asking them questions about their life and their experience with, with ICP and the whole juggalo um, um, culture. And I just really learned a lot. And, 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 you know, one of the things that really touched me when we initially went, we were going to originally, I had, I bought four tickets and I went with my ex-girlfriend and there was uh, initially, we're going to be two other people that were going to go with us. Well, those two people couldn't go. So I had two extra tickets. So the first night we were there, um, I went, I met Scotty and talked to him and, and he kind of like, we, we, you know, I think we, we started talking, we started finding commonality and some music and just some taste. And he was like, okay, this guy's, you know, this guy's on the level. He's not, you know, some, somebody trying to exploit us and whatever. Um, and, um, and so uh, the next day we were going to meet up and hang out. So we were leaving the first day. And as I'm leaving, there's this like couple outside selling jello shots in the parking lot. And you know, I never drink jello shots because I'm a whiskey guy, it was whatever. But I was like, let's go get some jello shots from these people. So we got some jello shots from them, and there was a girl and a guy. They were both really dressed up, big, you know, lots of makeup and stuff, and just started talking to them. And she her she goes by psychosis. She's in the movie as well. Um, she was great. And like so much of like the character I wrote of Eden was like what she was. It was like so real. It was like this is you know, this is a real human being who has heart and soul and has like felt all this. And they didn't, they actually didn't have tickets to the gathering. They were trying to raise money to get in. And I was like, I have two tickets. Like, I mean, let me, let me give these to you. You know, like what a great moment. And they were so touched by it. And I was so touched by being able to provide something, you know, to help them get in. And, uh, and it was just like, really like her, her boyfriend was like, you know, this isn't even my thing, but I love her so much and she loves this. So like, I want to be here with her. And I just was so touched by that stuff. I just thought these are just such sweet, kind humans. And, and so then, you know, the next couple of days of the gathering, I got to be really, you know, I got to meet, I mean, Jimmy Soda, Mankini, Psycho Scott, you know, all, all these, these guys. And Jimmy was just like, immediately, he loves movies. If you know, Jimmy, he's just a huge movie fan. And so he, we were just like, we, again, we all bonded, got to know each other. And uh, Jimmy ended up walking around the gathering and kind of like taking his gathering and like, just you showing me and introducing me to all these kind of jug of famous folks and stuff and telling me stories. So that's a lot of those like little, you know, true stories and juggalo lore really all came in at that kind of stage of the script. Um, because it was like, oh, well, this is like so rich. I mean, all this stuff, it's like how, how much cooler is it that we can tell these little stories that are true or, or, you know, little exaggerations of them. Or kind whatever. of flip them in a new way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Flip them in a new way. 
exactly. And just share it. You know, I just think it makes it more it's more rich. I mean, it's just it's just cooler. I mean, there's enough cool stuff that, that happens at the gathering that it's it's worthwhile. One of the funny like little tidbits of whatever um, is I, I was speaking to one 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 juggalo and it was like we had this one part where like at the beginning, you know, Trey isn't sure if he wants to go back to the gathering because he's just been in jail and he doesn't want to get in any more shit. And like, you know, Silas is like, you know, the the, the troublemaker, if you will. And, uh, and, and, and originally it was like, it was like, okay, don't, don't shit in garbage cans. And then some juggler was like, well, shitting in jar garbage cans is actually better than shitting on the ground. <laughs> so we were like, okay, like, that's the kind of stuff that was like, okay, I need to know this. But really truthfully, I think it was like, the thing was, it was a little bit of an outsider. And then as I really went to the gathering, it was, you know, and like, I, I felt the, the juggalo love, you know, I felt the acceptance. I felt the 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 camaraderie um and and i think that just really i'm just so grateful that i i went and did that not only for the footage but really for the experience and to really get to know juggalos in i i want to highlight the uh the sort of poetic uh the poetic meaning of um or how powerful it is that you while trying to gain entrance to the carnival itself you gave back to the carnival as giving those tickets which is an entrance into the carnival. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, that's some like, I don't know, to me, that's really powerful. That's like some carnival provides. Type well, hell thing. yeah. And that, and that's true. And like, the thing is the carnival provides, you know, we use the phrase cause it was told to us. Um, and then we use it in the film a lot. And I, I found that to be such a touching and beautiful idea of the carnival provides. And like, look, you know, you just keep, keeping on and you just keep doing it and the carnival will provide. And, and, you know, I grew up in like the church, like going to churches and like, you know, stuff like that. So I always, I found so much of those like same ideas and ideals in there. And I thought that was just really beautiful. And like you said, giving back to the carnival, you know, you get back what you give. And I think that's yeah. very true in life. You know, I think that the more goodwill you put out there, the, the more you get back and, uh, you set and your I, intentions, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. By with that action, I think that's really, that's quite powerful. Um, so, uh, let's see, I gotta, I, there's so many different directions I could go. Yeah. Uh, let's see how, so I know that you went to the, it was the 21 gathering, right? That you went to. That's correct. Um, and you met ICP at that one. Did you get, uh, I, in the Q and a that I got sent by a juggalo shouts out to the juggalo who sent me that Q and a, by the way, you mentioned that you had gone to a show and met them at a VIP before that, though. Yeah, so I met them twice at VIPs. Basically, I, I uh, there was a show here in New Orleans that they played, and I think it was the, I'm pretty sure it was the Riddle Box uh, anniversary show. And I paid for a VIP, and I had like a little teaser trailer. I had shot something that was like, I shot it a long time before, and it was this little teaser trailer thing. And when I went and met him, I'll be honest, I kind of chickened out and didn't show it to him. I had my iPad with me and I was going to try to show it to him. And I kind of chickened out about it because uh, I didn't really know what to do. Like, I didn't know what I was really hoping for. I guess it was just like, I want you to know I'm doing this kind of yeah. thing. Um, so I didn't that didn't really I wasn't as fruitful as I sh I was just I don't know. I was scared for some reason. I don't know. Um, and I just didn't really talk about it with them. I, I kind of I would have I think Jay would have marked out if you would actually shown him like uh, like you're actually doing it like, oh, shit. Like you're not just saying you're doing it like you're doing it like, you know what I mean? Maybe so. And that and, and that might be kind of what it is, because. Well, when 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 I went to the gathering in 21, I did. That's also I'll give you a funny little tidbit, too, that I'll also say. But I went to the gathering in 21 and we did like the hunt for Bigfoot thing. That was the oh, OK. Before. You did that one. <laughs> well, I didn't actually do the actual hunt for Bigfoot like <laughs> thing because it was the, really the, the, it was really VIP. like, yeah, we did the VIP thing. And as you know, if you've done these things, they were very late at night. It was like at three o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. And I, I uh, and of course, I, I get we get there to the gathering and go in, and you know, there's all the the megaphones, "fuck your sleep" and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, this is uh, this is interesting. Um, but we did the meet and greet, and we, that was really the the aim was to do the meet and greet. And we did the meet and greet, and this time I told them. This time I was I was I was more bold. And I said, hey, we're making this movie. And, you know, they were they were very, you know, they encouraged it. They were very like, cool, man, go for it. Like, great. Like, they, you know what I mean? Like, Jay was very was very cool about it. They were both like, you know, go for it. Do it. We, You know, um, I think, you know, they probably hear a lot of things like this, too. Yeah. Uh, 100 percent. 
So, so I don't, you know, but they were, like I said, they were very kind and they were very accepting and very like uh, positive about it. And we're like, you know, go for it. So it was, it was cool. And you were saying in the Q and uh, the Q and a gimmick that like initially you were going to maybe try to approach them. Well, I guess you had tried to approach them to possibly be in there for a cameo, but it didn't work out that way. And I, you actually said in the, the Q and a, and I thought this was interesting that you're, it's maybe better that it worked out that way because it ended up being a movie more about juggalos and less, less about ICP. And I thought that was really dope because that's what it is. It is really a movie about what it's like to be in society as a juggalo. I think, I think ultimately. Yeah. I mean, I, we definitely, yeah. The, the, the first initial dream was to have, to try to get them in it. Um, you know, I mean, Hey, what a huge bonus that would be. Right. Um, uh, it would be great. Um, but you know, I mean, it just, <clears throat> I, it was, I think timing and things and, you know, it's a, it's a hard time. Uh, it's a hard thing to do. Uh, particularly we don't have the resources to necessarily, you know, um, it's a super small movie, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's just hard to, to kind of get those, um, those things, uh, you know, done. Um, and in the end, yeah, I agree. I do think, I think that if it would have been, you know, if ICP would have been in it, I think there'd be a focus on that. And that's great. I mean, they're, they're, they're awesome. But to me, this movie is about juggalos and like, to me, the real, um, the real love affair I have with, is really with the juggalo culture because i think that it's such a unique culture and and as some people said kind of the last american subculture um and i think that's all really really cool and i mean sure yes it would have been great to have icp in it and you know if we ever do off ramp two maybe we can do that maybe we'll make it happen um but oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, so you're was, saying there's a possibility of an off ramp too. Is that, that's a possibility. I mean, if somebody has the money that wants, Oh uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was let's, see, dope. let's see how successful the film is. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, uh, I, I, I would, I mean, I, I, I think it would be, you know, I think there's always, there's always a possibility, you know, um, I think that the characters are great and I think there's enough that you could always, you know, tell more, um, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll see what happens. Wow. That, that actually made me kind of excited. I'm, I'm, a, I'm legit a huge fan of this project, man. I, oh, thank you. Bravo. I can't, I can't say enough nice things about it. No, it um, means a lot. And like, listen, I, like what I said too, is like, the funny thing is I'm like, you know, when I watch this movie, I'm like, I'm more, I, I'm more nervous. I want juggalos to like it even, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, it's one thing if like normies like it and that's cool too. And I want everybody to like it. I mean, the movie, as you see, it's, it's kind of for both. You know what I mean? It's like it tells normies about juggalos and it kind of like is a but but to me, it is one of those things that like I, I really want to make sure that juggalos feel seen. You know what I mean? Like I I, I don't I want them to. And, and and thankfully, what I have experienced thus far has been mostly that. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful that that's that that's the case. Uh, and, yeah, I want more juggalos to see it and love it. And I'm very glad you're so touched by it. Um, when do you think there'll be a chance to, uh, get a wider release? I saw on Facebook, you mentioned something about fall for a wider release. I know obviously a wider release in more theaters, uh, would be ideal, but you're still on the festival circuit now. So that's correct. We're still doing some festivals. Um, we, uh, have a distribution deal uh, that we're working on. Um, so it will basically, it we're, we don't, I, again, I can't say exactly cause we don't have the date, basically the kind of way the process goes, you have to like submit the film. And once they say like, Oh, it's all good. Then they kind of like set a target date. Um, and then we start doing it. Um, our company basically retained the theatrical rights so that we could, because we want to, uh, one thing I wanted to still do and I still want to do is like have, um, you know, screenings like around you know more juggalo centric if you will that would be awesome like um, actually like pack it out with just juggalos and stuff that would be freaking awesome dude. that's that's the dream you know i mean i'd love to have that kind of experience um so what we'll probably do is have a small theatrical run that's like very it'll probably be very limited like la new orleans because i'm here uh and then it's either like I, we've tossed around the third one is maybe Detroit because I know there's a big juggalo. Yeah. Thing, obviously. That uh, would go crazy. You could, that would be awesome. you could go crazy in Detroit with that. Love that. Um, so yeah, so a little of that. And at the same time, 
uh, it will be on uh, VOD at that time. It'll be, uh, you know, first it'll start on like Amazon and iTunes and, and, and like pay VOD sites. And there will be a physical, there will be physical DVDs. Yes. Available. Yes. Um, because we'll I know they like physical nerds. So I definitely oh, same want here. that. It's huge. So that's awesome. That is awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, yeah, we already kind of touched on this stuff. Uh, so there are other cameos in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of touched on Mankini's in there. Uh, Scotty D is in there. Um, a few. Uh, uh, actually, if, if you're watching really close, you'll notice a few a few other little quick walk bys. There's a there's a homie, a slight spoiler, a homie of mine named uh, Murder Mayhem Mitch. I saw just walking by casually. That 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 geeked me out. Um, let's see. So that's yeah, one that, of the things uh you know like you know jimmy when i showed it to jimmy soda he was he's like he was like dude if you can just put more juggalos in it he's like juggalos love watching other juggalos 100 like, so, so he's 100%. like if you, can, if you can put more juggalos in the movie he's like that's that's a that's a win so as we kept working on it we kept you know going back and 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 trying to and that's you know we put like more of the like gathering footage kind of at the end over the credits to you know just to kind of keep that kind of thing going um because it was great it was and we got so much awesome footage i mean you know it's a, it's it was beautiful it's hot as hell but uh it was very beautiful and very cool and um i i, yeah, I had a great time i recommend every person who asked me to go to the gathering i said i would absolutely recommend going the uh the the stuff at the end actually was um some of that footage is actually what got Emily to cry. My got my girlfriend to cry right at the end. Oh wow. She's just like, I can't wait. I just can't wait to see it was like on some like I can't wait to see my friends again. Yeah. Because the gathering is coming up in a couple of months. Speaking of which, what's the possibility we could get a screening of this at the gathering this year? Can we set can we try to set that up? This year might be tough because uh, it's still because it still isn't out yet. Yeah. And so the distributor might be not be too jazzed about that. Um, what well, I think next year, next year is the 25th annual. That, so ooh, ooh, let's go next year, I think would be huge because then the movie's like out. I, we, we have talked about, and I would like to, it depends on a few other little things in my life, but I would like to go back to the gathering this year uh, just to kind of go, maybe hand out some fly, just kind of keep raising awareness of the movie, you know, maybe get a chance to talk to more people. Um, we'll, we'll see if I can, but I agree with you hundred percent next year would be huge. Um, and it's really just one of those things that uh, it's just a matter of like, you know, we're making a distribution deal. So we just have to like honor that part of it until it's, you know, um, so, so I think this year might, but, but we could, if we could, we could do a trailer, we could possibly do a scene, you know, there's some uh, there's other like worlds and other possibilities um, that I'd be happy to, to, to work out. Next year, I think we need to make that happen then, because I think I that would be a really uh, a beautiful thing to happen uh, is a, a screening of that because they have a movie tent. So at the very least, they can run the DVD in the damn movie tent. Yeah. <laughs> Next run on loop. Let's go. <laughs> so um, getting a little bit into the uh, the movie itself without spoiling anything, because I don't I want to try to keep this as pure as possible. Um, there's great heels in the movie, but the protagonists, you know, they're the stars of the movie, Trey and Silas. Um, great character work on the on them, because to me, they're really complex characters and you do an interesting thing with Trey and Silas where, and I, I'm curious if this was by design uh, without spoiling anything. And I don't think this does spoiling spoil anything to me. The movie starts with Trey as the main character and Silas is definitely the uh, comedic sidekick almost, but that changes as the movie goes on. And there's almost a complete 180. And by the end of it, I think it's swapped and um, Silas is now the main character and Trey is his sidekick in a way is was that by design yeah to a bit you know it's kind of one of those funny things that sometimes things just kind of happen in a way and you sort of like when you look at it at the end you're kind of like oh wow look at what we did you know um and I I would say that that you know we we always wanted the move we it is true there is a big there's a thing that um when you see the movie, there's a moment in the middle of the movie that like everything kind of switches. And it's like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, it kind of indicates to you that it's no longer just a comedy and there's like a bit more going on. And I think at that moment, the movie really does start to kind of like, it's always was a buddy comedy. It was always about two guys. It was always about 
you know, this sort of like brotherly love affair kind of thing. It's almost like a bromance is like some people would call it, you know. Um, and uh, it, it's like one of those things that it does kind of make this really cool kind of switch over to sort of Silas's uh, character. And it's some of those things that I think some, so many times you do things that are sort of, um, uh, they just kind of like happen naturally, like that happened naturally. Um, it wasn't necessarily um, designed to, per se that it was like, oh, we're going to switch and make it. It was like, oh, we just kind of like how we wrote it. It just kind of ended up sort of that way. And then as we were kind of putting it together, we were like, oh, this is a good thing. Like, let's focus on this. Um, but there's so many because, again, we wrote the original script in 2015. So there's so many different versions of this script. I mean, it's like we wrote it forever and it was like we re rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it. And uh, so that that I think that constant time rewriting it, just like you really get to know the characters very well. And I think, you know, we wanted to give Silas sort of like this agency um, because he's also like one of the, he's like such a unique and cool character and um, with the best hair do in the, in the movie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I always saw the thing is I see Trey, like I always saw Trey as kind of like, like I saw myself in Trey, right? Like it's kind of my perspective, you know, of like looking kind of a little bit from the outside, a bit of the straight man kind of thing. And so I think that that sort of thing was like, I, I, because again, I think one thing that's really interesting about the film when I look at it back is to say that like, and, and it's interesting because we'll see this, we've seen this at the film festivals, people who are even again, like they're cool kids still, they're, they're not juggalos, but they're cool kids, you know, even they kind of bring some biases and prejudices to the movie, not necessarily, they're not wearing them on their sleeve, like, you know, some assholes are, but they, they may have them. And they may have them about juggalos. And then as they watch the movie and as you watch the whole film, when you get through it, you're like, well, wait a minute. Like these are not only are these people, but they're like really cool people and they're really interesting and they've gone through, you know. So like I think one thing that's really cool, like somebody told me after one screening, they're like, you just undid all the wrong that the media has done for juggalos. I'm like, I don't know if I've done that, but if, if I can at least you're like. You're helping. You're definitely I'm helping. helping. You're we definitely can at least helping like, with this movie. Yeah, if we can at least like enlighten you know, a small portion of people to say, hey, you know what? We should all treat each other more like humans all the time, you know? And if you can always treat each other, you know, nicer, that's great. I think I got a little off topic, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, I, that, I, I want to talk about that that one thing in the middle of the movie so bad, but we can't, we just can't. <laughs> we um, can't because you don't want to, we don't, we, it's, it such a, it. it's such a great thing. And like, truthfully, I just want everyone to have the same experience you had when you watched it, you know? Because it, it's, it did not see it coming completely. And it's so important to everything going on in the culture right now. It's a, that's a big thing going on in the culture right now. It's so important. And I, I wanted to highlight it again though, because it, it's not only a moment where the, the focus sort of, flips from Trey to Silas. Um, but it's also a moment in the movie where all the characters are sort of sharing a moment and you realize, oh, this is like everyone here is like way more complex than just on the surface. Like, and I don't even want to ruin that moment too much either, because I think that's a super important moment, even before that mm -hmm. big reveal. Um, but yeah, super powerful stuff. Um, I think Juggalos will really relate to that moment where they're sort of, I guess you can say sharing mm -hmm. with each other. I, you know what I'm talking about, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, really great stuff with that. That's it, okay. that that moment. I was like, oh, that this movie gets it. This movie okay. gets it because we're all kind of broken people mm -hmm. in a way. We've all had like really hard uh, family situations or something's broken in our family situation. And that moment really highlighted it in like a beautiful way. Thank so you. Bravo on that part. Like I was really impressed with that. Um, Thank you. And I think, uh, you know, I think we all have that, you know, I think to differing degrees, right? Everybody's got their own level of, of trauma in their lives and past and, 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 you know, things that they wish they could have done differently or things that they wish they had had differently in their life. And, and I think, you know, yeah. So I just think that, that that's, I think that being able to share that, having people and showing just, 
people being people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think that's one of the things and, and, um, you know, but also too, like one thing, uh, you know, if you're listening and you haven't seen the film, it's also, I know we're talking a lot about the kind of like serious stuff about it, but it's also like really funny too. I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, we are focusing a lot on the seriousness of it, but it is super, you're, it's really funny. And, uh, you talked about Kevin's, uh, Kevin Smith's, uh, dialogue. I got to give you major props on the dialogue in this movie, because to me, it's very natural. There's, a moment with Eden, Trey, and Silas outside where they're having a conversation by the car. And um, Eden says something. And there's a pregnant-ass pause, boy. Boy, there's a pregnant-ass pause. And that was one of the more powerful parts in that movie. Um, that you. was That was a great that was a great part. Uh, uh, let's see. But thank I wanted... you. Oh, sorry. Just talk no, about no, the dialogue real quick. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think, you know my uh, co-writer Tim and I, you know, I guess it comes from, you know, we just, like I said, we wrote it for so long. Um, we got to know these characters so well. And then again, as I got to know more juggalos and get to know kind of, you know, it was like, you always, you kind of model characters kind of after people, you know, right. Um, mm -hmm. And like, I always look at some of my friends and you just, you know, it was like having two really distinctive voices is a really big thing. And they, they you know, Trey and Silas have really distinct voices, you know, um, and I think that really feeds into it. And the other thing is that the actors did such a phenomenal job with the dialogue. I mean, those two guys, had, they had never met before. Um, but, I mean, they did like we did like an, you know, a Zoom like audition together. And uh, immediately, as soon as they showed up, it was like, OK, here's two strangers now. Be best friends. And uh, and credit to them for really just making that bond and not letting it go. Um, and they really both of them put themselves so much into the characters um, that it, you can see it. I think it pays off. So uh, that, that leads in beautifully into me asking about them because uh, what, what was their relationship with the Juggalodium and um, Juggalos and what was it like di directing someone to act as a Juggalo? You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. Um, with so John who plays Trey um, he came to, a, he was in my co-writer, Tim also uh, wrote this movie or co-wrote this other movie called low life. Uh, that's a really cool movie. If you get a chance to check it out, it's really good. And, uh, Johnny plays a guy who uh, gets out of prison again. And, uh, in that movie, he has a, a giant swastika tattooed on his face, um, which is a pretty wild thing. Um, but John a Nazi is, to a juggalo. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's like funny. Polar he's opposites actually, right there. He's actually not a Nazi too. And the thing that's the funny part is he just does it. So he doesn't get killed by the, the oh, Nazis. Shit. Anyway, it's a funny, it's a, it's a good movie. I recommend there's, it. There's almost a shared universe there. Where you could have his character as Trey meet that motherfucker in prison. <laughs> you know, yeah. that would be pretty awesome. Um, so Johnny was, you know, a bit more of like he was in like rock bands and things like that and whatever. And so I think, you know, he was kind of like I wouldn't say he was exactly Juggalo adjacent, but he like kind of was, you know, a little bit. I think he was kind of aware of it and, and whatever, um, you know, and then it was like he, he just, you know, I know he tells me that, you know, he basically he would like just sit in his garage. He said his buddy sent him like a, you know, a 12 pack of Fago when he said he got cast in the thing and he would just sit in his garage and read the script and get high and drink Fago and like kind of just put himself into it. And I think, you know, I, I obviously sent them a bunch of uh, docs, you know, American Juggalo very much. So family underground, you know, some of those, those docs just to kind of like be like, Hey, look, this is who, you know, these are the people we're trying to, to, you know, to emulate. Um, Scott was, is interesting. Cause I think Scott, you know, he first heard about the script and was like, what is this? You know what I mean? Like, what is this thing? But then he read it and was like, wait a minute, this is pretty interesting, you know, and this is a interesting thing. And I think again, they both, because there is a lot of heart in the film, I think that they both really connected with the heart and, and, and I mean, it's also fun to be, you know, as an actor, it's a fun character to be able to, you know, say stuff like, you know, show me your butthole and, you know, like it's fun, you know? So like they had a lot of fun with it. Um, and then as far as like directing people, you know, like a juggalo, it was like, you know, one of the things that I had to do, we had to kind of like look at is like, look, you know, there are funny things about being a juggalo that like are just funny and that's okay. Like I said, show me your butthole is just funny. That's not, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That, and so I was like, we, sometimes at first they would kind of play it too like funny, 
you know, they would try to kind of be too funny. And so occasionally I had to sort of pull it back and be like, no, no, just like say the lines and like, it'll be funny just because it is. Mm. And I think it was like Hitchcock or somebody else who said, uh, you know, he's like, if you're trying to direct a comedy, make direct it like a drama. And if you're trying to direct a drama, direct it like a comedy, because I think the truth of the matter is things are funnier when people are being themselves and being earnest and like, you know, you may like we you and I might have a conversation and say something that's funny and it may not elicit this huge laugh from us. But a third person listening in might be like, well, that's hilarious because of like the way your perspective is. So, um, you know, but I again, credit to them. They really dove into it. And honestly, too, I think one of the big things was about like, you know, doing like the hair, which was like a big thing. Right. For both of them. We wanted to have these specific hairstyles. And, you know, getting their hair cut and designing their hair like that really put them into the place. And like for Scott, uh, if you haven't seen the trailer, he's got kind of the Coolio kind of thing with, you know, yeah, very crazy spider, legs. spider legs going on. Crazy spider legs. And the thing was, we had this really, you know, we're doing this really low budget. So we had, we only shot for, we shot for 18 days, which was three six day weeks. So basically we, and it took four hours to put the hair style together. So we could, he couldn't take it out for the whole three weeks. So he like slept with it in with like a, you know, with like a hairnet over his thing. And I think that like keeping the hair like that really kind of kept him in the character. Kept um, him method. He was method. Exactly, because of exactly. that. <laughs> and I mean, the other thing is like Scott's never really rapped before in his life. And so like he had to rap and learn how to rap and, you know, and that's it, really them on the songs, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really them on the songs in the movie. Yeah. I don't even want to spoil that too much, honestly. <laughs> I was gonna bring that up, but I'm like, nah. It's better if you just let that happen. Um, fuck. Uh, there's. Let's see here. Um, yeah, with the comedy stuff, though, you do a great job of like blending the two, the drama and the comedy. Um, and it never comes off as like. I, so I think you did a great job with uh with the balancing because it never comes off as like hacky or lazy like it, there's not any of the low-hanging fruit juggalo jokes that you would maybe expect a comedy like this to make mm. um uh, uh for example miracles is used in the movie but you don't use it in a way to be like haha magnets it's actually used in a very like powerful like it's like almost like a sweet and empowering way because it's actually, it's actually used twice I don't even want to spoil that too much, but it's actually well, there's a sort of three way, three times because they sing it too. You know, that's they, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. So real quick, I talk about miracles. Is you know, obviously that's the the song we were we licensed we licensed from from ICP, and um, it was always very essential that that was a part of the script. Uh, I thought I I I always saw something in miracles that. Yes, sure, there's the Magnus joke and there's these other things, but there's also is this like beauty to the song. I mean, and like as I the more I listen to it and the more we like put it together and the more it kind of plays in the movie, like I I've come to really like the song. You know, I think it's actually like, I mean, you know, music is magic, it can't be seen. You can feel it and hear it, but it can't be seen. It's a great line, you know. It's great. You know the, do you know the origin of how Jay wrote that song? Something with his kid, right? Wasn't yeah, it? he was watching his kid play and like just like discover nature and like asking mm -hmm. questions about stuff for the first time. And he's like, I should like he's like he's seeing stuff with such wonder for the first time in his eyes. And he just wanted to write from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you know that, like it's almost kind of shitty to make fun of that song. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, well, it's, you know, it's a really sweet, uh, a sweet song. It, if you know, it that. is a sweet song and it's got a great little melody to it too. I mean, um, one thing that's, uh, but I think it's great because it plays in that certain specific way where it kind of, it, it kind of it, it like, it kind of speaks to the essence of off ramp too, where it's like, you know, at first you're kind of like, ha 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 ha. And then you're like, Oh, you know, like, like you're, it's like, oh, there is like feeling here. Yeah. And like, you know, and I think that's, and it's like Mankini said, he's like, Mankini was like, he's like, I think you're, you're helping us take that song back. And I was yeah. like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's take it. I agree. Song. I agree 100%. <laughs> I agree. Um, um, but you oh, sorry, you were saying earlier about balancing the comedy and the drama. Yeah. Too. I mean, um, I, I, one of the things too is like, you know, I always, I kept saying to my, my co writer was like, I think this movie is going to be better if it's more of an art film and not necessarily just a comedy. And I was like, also like Juggalos deserve an art film too. Like, you know, again, family is great, but it's like, it's kind of like, it's very jokey and it's very jokey. I mean, about the Juggalos. It's very mm -hmm. like jokey about the Juggalos. 
Um, and, and so I was like, well, let's try to like, let's bring the, 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 you know, the art and the feeling back into it. I, I jokingly kind of jokingly, I tongue in cheekingly will say that I wanted to make, uh, the Terrence Malick Juggalo movie. Um, and you know, I don't think I necessarily achieved that, but I, I, I think that that was the essence of what we were trying to do. And another movie that is like a really, really major, major influence on this. And one of my favorite directors is, uh, David Lynch's wild at heart. And uh, Wild at Heart is one of those movies that, to me, I always love because it's funny, it's scary, it's it's emotional. It's like all of those things in the same kind of thing. And some of my favorite movies, I mentioned Raising Arizona, like the my favorite movies are the movies that make you feel a full breadth of emotion. And I think when you, you experience something that's like comedy, that's funny, um, it kind of makes you more open to like other emotions too. And I think, you know, um, again, without giving too much away, there's some freaky things that happen in the movie and then there's some cringy kind of moments. And, and I think all of that makes, you know, kind of adds up to the sort of emotion that, um, that we, you know, want you to feel. There's a, uh, yeah, there's definitely another moment towards the end where uh, we can't talk about it at all. Cause it's so, it's so, yeah. I, I feel like it, like, I can't even say it. I'm not even going to say it. Um, well, what I'll say is this, because I, I know what you're referring to, and it's when our characters sing the lyrics to, to Miracles. <laughs> that image is what started the whole movie. That was like, I watched the American Juggalo, and I don't know, had a dream or something, or got high or did something. I had some moment, and I had this image that is, you know, that scene. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think saw you talk about that in the Q&A, too. That's the, that's the, that's sort of where the, that's the, that's the essence that like, that was like the image that I kept going back to that I wanted to find how do we get our these characters to this point. Um, and, uh, and I thought that that really kind of summed it all up, you know. I know one of the things you said also were, uh, I think in a message to me is that one of the biggest honors is that uh, people are saying it's not what they expected. Um, and I think you, you, you definitely exceeded my expectations. Um, and you. one of the things when the trailer came out, we were excited, but we were also a little hesitant when we watched it because there's a there's a part. And, I, and this goes into uh, we're going to talk about one of the three big wig flipping moments for me that the less the less wig flipping moment. Um, There's a there's a, a part in the trailer where uh, Silas has a big old gun. And I was like, oh, man, they're going to make this about like Juggalos doing crime shit. And I was like, I don't know if that's a good look. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of reveal this. Uh, this is a slight spoiler. I don't think it ruins it too bad. And I asked Nathan about this. We were talking about it before, so it's okay. Um, that gun ends up being a water gun with LSD in it. Um, just to sort of like let Juggalos know that's not like at all what they're trying to do with that shit. And that fucking flipped my wig because the way it's used, and this is no spoilers, the way it's used is such a, um, it's like the opposite of uh, uh uh killing in a way you know what i mean like he's he's he, <laughs> he almost heals a character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, with the gun in a way um yeah no that right. was so fucking dope man okay. i thought that was so dope especially the way it plays out no <laughs> thank you. i i uh i think uh yeah i mean you know we decided very early on that we were like we didn't want our heroes to be you know we wanted to make statements about how juggalos are have been mistreated by the the police and by society in a lot of ways and that you know this bullshit about calling them gangs and all this kind of stuff and whatever that like we wanted to make sure that we had you know discuss this and adjust and like and like addressed it in the movie um and and i again i think it speaks so much to like what the the essence of what we were trying to do is like hey you know you may see someone this way and you may be taught that like because of the media is telling you this but like like let's look at the people like who are the people like you know um and and it was like you know it was yeah it was one of those and you're right and they, and, and they really do like, cause I think in the movie, you know, with again, not giving too much away, but you know, Ra the Randy Cox, the cop who gets dosed with the LSD, you know, he does have a, a, a bit of a redemption arc because, mm -hmm. you know, because of that. And I think, you know, that also speaks to one of those things that like, Hey, you know, you never really know how you're going to touch someone else's life. 
And, you know, sometimes these acts and these things, you know, just open each other's eyes to it. And, um, you know, I think that's, um, you know, that was one of those things that again, like, yeah, a juggalo with a gun, like looks exciting and a trailer for, you know, people, but you know, it's like it, what you want to, again, what we wanted to do is talk about that and actually play in contrast to so much of uh, how we feel that like juggalos have been, you know, looked at because it's like, that's just, again, one of the things that I found so personally, you know, is like, this is just such a, a thing that like anybody that, to say that all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, you like, um, you know, you like uh, Drake now suddenly because you like Drake, I'm going to pull you over for something. I mean, you know, like how absurd. Oh, Taylor, is you're a Swifty. You you could get arrested for being a Swifty. You're like, what? Like, you know, how absurd that sounds when you start to like separate it from um from the juggalos and again just because you know maybe there's more piercings or tattoos or colored hair or whatever and you're like oh, this is such superficial stuff um and i mean you know and also too like we wanted scare so scarecrow is he's he's sort of the, you know he's kind of the bad guy in the movie um but we wanted to give scarecrow like i did want to address a little bit of like not every juggalo or anyone who has always been a juggalo is like a is perfect because like hey humans are not perfect like I, I you can take any group of people of any kind i mean i mentioned christians before and you can say how many christians have done bad in the name of god i mean the crusades for god's sake or whatever i mean you know any group of people can be whatever and so we wanted to show both sides um but we wanted to clearly um give the juggalos the the last word you know yeah man that's you know, um, one of the things about the heels too I noticed is the um, there's almost like a, a there's almost like a hierarchy between the three major heels. There's uh, Scarecrow, the cop, and uh, I'll call him the politician. Mm -hmm. To me, he's sort of a politician, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes up the levels. It feels like in the movie, and I really dug that because it really reminded me of um, there's an old ICP comic from back in the day called The Wicked Clowns with a Z and this movie actually kind of really weirdly reminds me of the wiki clowns comic book because it's a lot of it is about like sort of them like fighting an evil uh the evil governor and all and all of this stuff and it, it's I don't know it's just uh I really dug it on that level too because it felt like a I think in my review I called it a juggalo fairy tale if that's what it feels like to me I love and, that um, and if it's, I don't know, I can't say enough nice things about the movie. Oh, well, thank you. No, I really appreciate it. I, and I do love you calling it a juggalo fairy tale because, I mean, you know, there certainly is a certain kind of like fairy tale sort of element to it. I mean, when you see it, you know, there's the voiceover, there's the dogs, there's the, you know, there's the dogs. The, the dogs are great. Dogs. Right? I'm glad you brought up the dogs because I was hesitant to even bring up the dogs. Um, to me, that's, uh, to me, that's one of the more uh, artful things that you did with the film uh very subtle very very subtle and if you're paying it you might not even catch it at first if you're if you're not really paying attention but it's a very subtle thing you did i don't want to even say what, what what was done exactly but it's a thread that goes throughout the movie and it just ties in so perfectly man no thank you it's yeah, i mean i think you know i listen i first of all love dogs uh, and i think that you know i think that you know, to me, the sort of stray dogs sort of felt, felt like a, a fitting metaphor for a lot of juggalos, you know, that, that you because know, Trey gets called a mutt. Yeah. Early in the and I, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, now I see. Now I see. I get it um, now. Yeah. yeah. And there was like that kind of thing of like just keeping it to, you know, keep that together. And, you know, it's like, you know, there's the wolves and the pack and the things mm -hmm. and you know, all that kind of stuff. And I found that metaphor to be really, really uh, strong and, and work really well to the advantage of the film. Um, and, uh, I think, you know, all that really, you know, did, did, you know, work together. And, um, uh, so yeah, I mean, we found this kind of poetic sort of, uh, thing and, um, you know, uh, well, sorry to talk about the hierarchy thing. I think one thing is, you know, I think that, I think what we were, one thing that we're trying to say, and I think you'll see, you see it in there is that like, especially when there's when people are doing bad when people are are doing wrong things there's often you know it's like even if there's a bad guy there's there's often something human about them i mean i think it's one reason why we 
you know, like movies like Joker and things like that, like as, as just people, like it's just like we don't, we identify not necessarily just with like, you know, who, who wants to see a character who has no flaws? Like it's just boring, you know, and it's not human and we don't identify with it because we all see ourselves as having flaws. And I think one thing that's interesting is like, you know, with we tried to do sort of with the heels is sort of, and I love that you use that term too, by the way, I think that's great. No, I too. love, I love using wrestling terminology. No, that's great. And it's, Appropriate for juggalos, of course, um, and uh, is to, you know, there's like levels to like trauma and there's like levels to 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 evil. And I think that, you know, bad begets bad. And, and I think that it, it kind of shows that like if people are treated poorly, they behave poorly, um, not always, but some and it does happen that way. And and so that sort of like uh, that kind of hierarchy of of evil, if you will. Um, I think uh, plays out and I'll, I'll say this is a pretty good, um, this is, doesn't give away too much, but um, uh, the actor who plays uh, Gavin, the politician, if you will, is like the sheriff. He, uh, so Gavin, I, I read, I met uh, when I was a gaffer on a couple of different TV shows. I worked with him on uh, underground and, and, and um, uh, the purge and stuff like that. And so he's a kind of a well-known, not super well-known, but he's, he's a well-known actor is a, a television actor for sure. And um, we did a little interview with him and he said, you know, I've he's like in the diamond household, we make a living playing evil white guys. He's like, I've been a, a slave owner. I've been a Nazi. I've been a Marvel supervillain. And he goes "Then the most evil character out of all of them is Gavin. God damn. That's saying something. <laughs> when I, and I felt like I was like, that's a victory because I was like, I wanted to, you know, we really wanted a, a, a pretty pretty big piece of sh piece of shit. Yeah, he is a big piece of shit, he's too. Piece of um, shit. Uh... <laughs> All right. I think I think that's almost every I'm just going through my questions to make yeah. sure I didn't skip over everything. I think we touched on everything, though. Cool, man. Um, well, yeah. um, I mean, first of all, I just want to say thanks. Thank you very much for having uh, and for for doing this review and having the interest. I mean, it's it's great. And, and like I said to me, the, the fact that Juggalos are, you know, that you as a Juggalo have enjoyed it and found, you know, saw yourself in the in the in the film and. It's going to end up being one of my favorite movies of the year, hands oh, down. It's going to like if I did a top five list at the end of this year, it's going to almost certainly be up on there. It's I really related with it a lot. It like hit me on a it hit me on a different level. Thank you very um, much, man. I mean, I, I look, I cry every time I watch it. So I am happy that, you know, it has the same similar kind of effect to, to other people, too. You know, great job. Great job. Um. I, there's more that I, I, we can maybe talk about later when it's more widely released, because I'd love to go back and talk about some stuff more spoilery. Um, I have three questions that I usually ask everybody to wrap this up, though. Um, uh, have you ever had a paranormal experience? I kind of don't believe in ghosts, if I'm being honest. Um, uh, UFO. Have you seen some, a Bigfoot type anything? Anything at uh, other all? Than, other than the Bigfoot hunt at uh, gathering in twenty one. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, no. You know, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't put a lot of stock in that stuff. I guess. I mean, you know, I, I can remember one time when I was in like high school, and there was definitely some, a lot of illicit substances involved. And I had a bunch of friends over at my parents' house and there was like, you know, like a glass fell over and we were all like and broke. And it was like, oh, no, who is this? And I mean, you thought it was a ghost. And I was like, no, it's it probably just the cat who just knocked the glass over. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe in like a spirit world or another thing. Um, because like I still I do believe in something. I think that we you know, I think there's something. But, but I don't. You have ever had an actual paranormal experience personally? If you were a Care Bear, what mm. would be the symbol on your stomach that you radiated out? Oh, that's like a really good question. Shouts out to Whoopconda. Whoopconda always drops that question in the oh, chat. I'm just, I'm just putting that in here now. That's a great one. I tell you, it would be one of two things. Um, one of them uh, would would either be, you know, my last name's Tape. So like the first tattoo I got was a cassette tape. Actually, by the way, here's my here's my off ramp tattoo. That's how I got, oh, you got an off. Oh shit! Yeah. Well, we we went to Splat. Our, we did, debuted in Splat Film Festival in Warsaw, Poland. And when I when I anytime I go to any country overseas, I'm like I have to get a tattoo. It's something to keep. You know, it's a souvenir you won't lose. 
And uh, we, it was the world premiere of the film. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to get the splat logo, the splat laurel with off ramp in the middle. Um, but uh, so the, the Care Bear would either, but I think probably better, um, which I don't have a tattoo of yet, is a VHS tape. So I think let's put a VHS tape on my Care Bear chest uh, because my last name's tape and I love movies. And uh, so the movies radiate out of the, uh, the, the VHS tape. That's dope. I'm with that. All right. Here's the here's the uber pretentious question I told you about before we started. If you could tell the whole world one thing and you know they would hear it, what would it be? We're all juggalos. Oh, shit. That's fresh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that one. I fucking yeah, appreciate brother. that one. Well, because that's the truth dope. is, I think that, you know, let's speak a little bit about that. <laughs> and just real quickly is that, you know, I think that's the essence of the film that we're trying to say here is that everybody, every human should look at each other and say, they're my brother. And every human should look at in within and say, how can I be a better person? One of the biggest compliments that I've received after the watching this, you know, showing this film is a kid came up to me and he said, you know what, watching this film made me want to be a nicer person. And I was so touched. And I said, making this film made me a nicer person. Because I, I think I really, you know, I went through a journey and I and I'm happy to share that journey about it. And like that's why I'm happy to say that like when we started, I think I had the wrong idea. And I think that you see that in the film, that you you go through that journey, that the the film is like at first you're laughing and you're kind of whatever, but as it goes, you really do start to see the heart. And I that's what I experienced was that you know what, everybody is you, you know, you want to call it's like, is it rap music? Is it rock music? Is it is it I mean, is it Christianity? Is it is it is it Mormonism? Is it is it you know, anything is basically the same thing as just, you know, finding your found family and people that you connect with and the people that you want um, to spend time with, you know, find your tribe, you know, and and just because this group of people has said their tribe, you know, has clowns in it and has face paint. And like that doesn't change the fact that that's the same essential thing as any of this other. Like I said, going, I grew up in the church and I always found this really like I, one thing that like made me not like believe in like what especially modern Christianity was, was this idea that like, oh, well, uh, if you're an, a native human and you've only ever worshipped the sun, you're not going to go to heaven. And I was like, wait a minute, like. Wait, <laughs> you're like you're like so 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 a Muslim who is who who loves God and loves their you know they're not going to go to heaven because they're not going through this other they don't you're telling me that this 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 Buddhist who is you know like that's horseshit you know and and to me to say that like that that there is only one path of anything and that's all it is being a juggalo is just another path you know what I mean a hundred percent like. This is the uh, the quote I think I used in, uh, I have it in my notes here. I used it in the review, but like many things in life and certainly the juggalodium, it's more complex than that. Like, and I think that touches on so much of what you did with the, with the, with the movie, um, the characters, both the, the, the baby faces and the heels, <laughs> um, it, 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 everyone is so much more complex and it. Like, as the movie goes on, it almost like continues to highlight that. Um, and I think that, and the fact that you have people coming up and saying it made them want to be a nicer person, I think that truly means you made a like a tremendous piece of art. Like you made a tremendous piece of art. Thank you. You man. should be I, very proud. You should be very proud of it. Thank you. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of all the work that we did and other people did. And I'm I'm just proud that like I'm re- very proud that it, it's like that it, it that people are communicating, I mean, con- connecting with it. And that it is affecting people uh, in the way that it affected me and, and the way that, you know, discovering this you know subculture and these people and connecting with these people touched me and changed my life um so i just i hope that it continues to do so um and uh and it's a lot of fun you know i mean that's the thing is that the movie it's it was a lot of there's a lot of trials and tribulations in making it uh we had a lot of struggles uh you know making it it's an independent film um, but, you know, in the end, uh, it's all worth it. And it all the carnival does provide. It really does. Um, and I think we kept saying that over and over. And like just like a quick, for instance, is like we ended up like losing some footage and had to go back and do reshoots, which on an independent small budget is like, you know, a death nail. Right. Yeah, like, that's hor- that's awful. <laughs> right. But in the end, 
we were able to edit the movie or edit what we had and we discovered things that then when we went back to do the reshoots we were able to improve greatly and like the fact is is that that time off and that stuff actually made the movie so much better so like it's like it happened for a reason type of thing exactly so even though that sucks even though it costs more money even though it made you know fucked me up for a while in the end it was a better thing, you know, and I, little things too, like Scotty D who's also like, he's a, you know, a computer tech guy, right. When we lost some of the footage, we had this one drive and he helped me figure out how to, we recovered some footage because of what Scotty was able to do. So like that kind of thing of like, just again, being like constantly being good to your brother and like being around and being, you know, available to do good things for each other just kept producing you know, good results and beautiful, you know, things. And, and, and so the carnival provides, man, really does. That's what's up, man. Thank you so much for doing this, Nathan. Thank you for letting me see the movie um, and do a review and do this interview. I really appreciate it. I almost drove. Um, we were way too busy that week, but I almost drove down to Boston just to mm -hmm. see it. So man. Um, I'm glad, I'm glad you watched it when you did, you know, I'm glad I, Hey, first of all, you're welcome. And thank you very much for all the love and return, man. I mean, it is, uh, it's independent film. We need some the support and, and, and truthfully told too, like we need other juggalos to know too, that like, you know, like that, Hey, we are trying to do good. And like, you know, I, even if we didn't, we don't hit with every juggalo, you know, at least like, you know, that my intentions are good and like, I know that we're, I think Juggle has just got to give it a chance. I think if, because uh, like I, I think I said this in my review or uh, one of the streams I did, uh, it's that moment that we were talking about with the squirt gun when that reveal happens, like all of that stuff going down. Like it's like the first 10, 15 min minutes of the movie. It's really early. The movie had completely won me over by that mm -hmm. point. And I was just, I was in. I was so in. And it only continued to win me over as it was going down. Um, yeah, I, I can't I want to talk about more specifics, but we can't. Um, we will eventually. We will eventually. We definitely will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, like I said, I would love to come back and love to talk about it more. When the movie is released, um, we would love to. More talk Juggalos about it. have seen it. When more yeah. Juggalos have definitely seen it and they, yeah. they should see it. Um, yeah, there, right. some there are some really important things that should be talked about, but again, we don't want to ruin it for uh, the experience for everyone. Um, so, yeah. Because it um, is an experience. It's definitely an experience watching this movie. That's why I think it would be great to do as a tour like you were saying because yeah. it, it that would go off so well i think um all right man uh thank you for uh everything um, yeah thank you my friend too quickly uh if you're out there listening follow us on instagram at off ramp film and also our website is www.offramppfilm.com uh yeah man follow us please. where are you going next with the film actually let's get that out there too yes so uh, not this weekend, but next weekend uh, on April 22nd, we will be playing at Calgary Underground Film Festival in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I know there are some juggalos up in Canada, so please come on out if you if you can. Uh, it's a really cool festival from what I understand. Very cool uh, other films. Uh, my my co-writer, Tim, is Canadian, so we represent. Um, and so we're playing at Calgary Underground Film Festival uh, on April 22nd. Then after that, we will be playing at Chattanooga uh, Film Festival. We will be doing a virtual, we'll be screening virtually for Chattanooga, but it'll be like the first time we're doing a virtual screening. It'll be like a, a centerpiece thing. So there's, uh, you may be able to see it then. I don't know. You may be able to buy a ticket. Um, I hear that, y'all. There might be a way to see it digitally here soon. Yes. Um, and uh, so that might be something that you know, I have to figure that out, but that would be one thing. And then uh, there's a couple other festivals that are still out there. There's a few that have reached out to me um, that we've talked to. Uh, but it's like one of those things that if the film gets distributed, it's not, you know, it's kind of hard for festivals to program it because it's kind of out there. Um, but there's a possibility that we screen in uh, Minneapolis. There's a Sound Unseen Festival um, that we may either be playing at or be doing a, 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 a specific single screening uh, for there for one month. Um, but yeah, if you follow us on off ramp film, uh, at Instagram, I'm always posting stuff there too. Um, so we'll, we'll be out there and, and when we are out in the fall, um, we really do want to, you know, do little tour type things, um, because we do think that bringing this specifically to, um, juggalo audiences, uh, I think is really something that's really important. And we all know juggalos travel, 
um, you know, and they do, they're so great at support. Uh, and I just, you know, we want to continue, we want to give back to them. Like you said, we want to give back to the dark carnival. Uh, we don't want to just keep taking, you know, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate the movie, man. Cause it's, I really think it might be the best juggalo fiction thing ever. I really think it, I think you, I think you really took the title with that one. Thank you very um, much. Appreciate it. All right, guys have a good, uh, afternoon. Thank you, Nathan. Thank whoop, you. Whoop. whoop, whoop. Much clown love y'all. And broadcast. And